Hello everybody, I'm John Cullen. In this video, I'll be teaching you Medical Surgical Nursing 1 and the system is Respiratory System. And uh, in this system, one of the most important topic I'll be teaching you today that is Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, which in short form also called as COPD. This disease is the most worst and it's a severe problem. When a person is having COPD, he has more chances of being dead or chronically ill most of the respiratory diseases end up being COPD. Now we'll see what actually COPD is. Now we'll see what is the definition of COPD. The word COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In this word itself, in, in the COPD itself, it is clearly given that chronic. The word chronic means a longer duration. Obstructive means when a pathway is being obstructed with some other uh, barrier that is called obstructive and the pulmonary is related to the lungs and it is a disease. So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease means there is a longer duration of the disease where it obstructs the airway passage. So chronic means a longer duration. This COPD is also called as COLD which means chronic obstructive lung disease and it is also called as COAD that means chronic obstructive airway disease. And it is also called as CORD, which means chronic obstructive respiratory disease. Only the word here changes is P L A N R. P means pulmonary, L is lung, A is airway, R is respiratory. These are all the similar words for our respiratory tract. So COPD is also called as COLD and COAD or CORD. So these are the different names given for the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now we'll see what is the exact definition of COPD. It is the co-occurrence of the chronic bronchitis and emphysema. The word chronic bronchitis it is a bronchitis is the inflammation of the bronchus. When you say chronic it is a longer time. The bronchitis episodes occur again and again uh, in three times in one year we call it as chronic bronchitis and this chronic bronchitis when a person is having with emphysema emphysema is the obstruction or irre irreversible dilation of the air sacs that is alveoli that is emphysema when again and again the person is having chronic bronchitis and emphysema that will affect the airway permanently so this is called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so what both are causing these both are causing together a severe dyspnea that is called severe breathing problem the person will have severe difficulty in breathing so this is what COPD means now we'll see what and all it happens as you can see in this slide uh, first one is the chronic bronchitis uh, the left side one is the normal bronchus where the lumen is big enough so that our airway can go easily inside and come out when it comes to the increased or inflamed bronchus the airway passage is very small and there is fluid build up in that and uh, you can see the second uh, image that is emphysema the healthy emphysema has a proper grape like looking appearance when it comes to uh, alveolar uh, problem all the alveolar sacs are fused together and it looks like a bulged one and it has a sulky layer because all are together fused and when the air functions properly usually it go, it takes in oxygen and leaves out carbon dioxide that is the main work of alveoli but here you can see because the disease condition that is emphysema the destruction of alveolar sacs are being damaged that is why there will be problem so both bronchus is being diseased as well as uh, alveolar so chronic bronchitis and emphysema are leading to COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease now we see what the risk factor people who are very prone to get this uh, COPD are people who are uh, chain smokers and those who are exposed to air pollution people who are having autoimmune disorders occupational exposure such as people who work in gold mining other mining work chemicals and then fumes industries welding these people who are work under this uh, situation they are very much prone to get this disease and genetic problems such as alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency people with this usually what happens is uh, the, it protects the lung the alpha 1 antitrypsin
toxin usually protects the lung from damage caused by protease enzyme but when this antitrypsin is deficient that means when there is less of alpha 1 antitrypsin in the body then the person has more chance of getting lung problems and the other risk factors such as uh, those who are sudden airway constriction will be there such as asthma or pneumonia or any other uh, liver disease sorry lung diseases which can also lead to copd next we'll see uh, how chronic bronchitis causes you can see the pathophysiology here i'll tell you i'll explain what it is uh, the increase the pathophysiology because of first the topic what we're going to say is due to the etiological factor that means due to the cause such as uh, it can be bronchitis or it can be sorry it can be due to the smoke or uh, occupational hazards etc increase number in the size of globulin cell and mucus glands in the airway and then more mucus than usual airway usually there will be uh, moist in that air passage but due to the infection there will be more mucus production so due because of more mucus production there will be swelling of the mucus membrane also which will lead to narrowing of the air narrow means the passage of the bronchus or the pa passage of the air will become small because it is being more mucus and there will be inflammation also that will lead to narrowing of the airway causing cough and symptom and then there will be scarring or remodeling of the thickened wall narrowing the airway when the same process occurs again and again that passage will damage permanently there will be no reversible so this is how it is caused the next one is the see the last one there will be squamous meta uh, metaplasia that is the squamous tissue present in the bronchus layer will be abnormal change in the tissue lining and the inside airway and finally it causes fibrosis fibrosis means there will be thickening and scarring of the airway limiting to the air flow this is how bronchitis caused now we see how the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is being caused yeah, due to the etiological factors such as smoke and uh, or alpha uh, deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin what happens is there will be narrowing of the airway which reduce the rate of airway flow and the sacs and the limits of effective lungs will be decreased usually the lung function will be decreased and then expiration may not be complete before taking the next inspiration when the person inhales oxygen or when he in intake air while he expires the uh, the air he'll take longer duration than the normal so there will be less completion time before the taking next inspiration the next step is a little of the air previous breath will remain see uh, once the person breathe in and breathes out when he breathe in he take large amount of the air as a regular when he expires out he will do only uh, incomplete expiration will be there so some amount of the air will stay back inside the alveoli and before expiring the left out air he will inspire again so when he takes in the oxygen again so amount of oxygen every time it stays back inside the alveoli leading the damage of alveolar tissue and there will be a uh, loss of elasticity of alveolar sacs leading to increased volume in the air lungs and or dynamic hyperinflation takes place that means the air again and again stores back inside the alveolar sac and there will be hyperinflation that means there will be too much of uh, blown of alveolar sacs leading to uh, loss of surface area available to exchange the oxygen and carbon dioxide there will be decrease of the transfer of blood to the atmosphere what happens to the body is due to this physiological changes there will be very low of oxygen inside the body and there will be increased carbon dioxide leading for hypercapnia or you can also call it as hypercapnia this is how there will be uh, destruction of alveolar sacs and bronchus leading to copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder this is a pathological changes what we uh, uh, what is on now we'll see how it uh, affects like uh, chemically you can see in the screen the benefits what happens is when the mucus has been damaged uh, there will be impaired mucociliary function there will be inhaled corticosteroids because we'll keep taking medications for that 
when when our bronchus has been affected when there's too much of inflammation cough fluids mucus membrane inside our body so doctors prescribe corticosteroids that is anti inflammatory drug and the doctors also prescribe antibiotics uh, to kill the bacteria and to reduce the inflammation so when this happens as you can see the right side of the diagram the alveolar macrophages our body macrophages will start to engulf the bacteria and uh, neutrophils start to neutralize the content inside the body and then consolidation happens because all together mix and form a consolidation and it become thickened inside the alveolar sac leading to damage of alveolar sacs next one is acute exacerbation of the copd acute exacerbation the word exacerbation means the condition when it gets severe we call it as exacerbation that means there there is a problem or severe problem in the lungs or severity of the problem we call it as exacerbation acute exacerbation of copd is it is a sudden worsening of uh, copd symptoms which lasts for several days why it causes because there will be 75% of the infection from uh, 25% of bacteria and viruses and then other bacteria uh, leading to extra accumulation of different different bacteria all together and there will be pulmonary embolism all this together will worsen the condition of lung and what happens is there will be airway inflammation airway will be inflamed leading to exacerbation resulting in a increased hyperinflation see when the airway is destructed destructed again and again what happens the airway will become inflamed and reduces the breathing pattern the normal function of the lungs will be reduced and it will be disturbed also leading for hypoventilation means there will be low of ventilation leads to hypoxia insufficiency of the tissue and then lead to necrosis necrosis means there will be death of tissue where there will be no oxygen supply we see what happens when this uh, disturbance takes place inside the lungs when we already know this is a severe condition and the symptoms will be more most of the maximum of the lung diseases what and all the symptoms will have will all include in the copd especially like uh, coughing sputum productive cough uh, in case of bronchitis dyspnea will be there that is difficulty in breathing bronchi will be seen the word bronchi here means the intensity of the breathing like i already explained in the pathophysiology when the person inhales some half or the incomplete expiration some amount of the oxygen will be left out inside the alveolar that will will accumulate again and again when the person breathes in and the alveolar sac will be inflamed this can be seen this condition is called as wrong kind and there will be airflow limitation wheezing will be there chest tightness respiratory failure sinuses will cause and headache dizziness and then breathing problem tachypnea will be there that is increased breathing and sometimes it will be shallow breathing and the active use of muscles in the neck happens with breathing through the pursed lip pursed lip means the person will purse the lip purse the lip pursed lip means when the person whistles how the how does the lip look like like as if it is in a o shape so that is how pursed lip looks like so that will be seen when the person is breathing because he is the struggling very much to breathe and uh, there will be increased uh, antero posterior or uh, to lateral or ratio of the chest that is barrel chest the chest looks like barrel we already know how the barrel looks like where we store the water the tank looks like a barrel that barrel kind of appearance will be there the person who is having breathing difficulty problem so the chest looks like barrel the diagnostic we are going to find out how, uh, the how the copd has been caused like uh, what are the instruments we are going to use the first one is you can see spirometry the word spirometry here is it is a test to measure forced expiration volume in second that is also measure to force the vital capacity which the greater volume of the air can be breathed out in a whole large of breath it helps to determine what this spirometry usually helps is we ask the patient to expire uh, in a forceful manner to find out the capacity of the lung here we can determine the capacity of lung and then other uh, diagnostic evaluation such as a chest x ray will be done to find out the hyperinflation uh, ct scanning will be done that is computed tomography scan to find out the emphysema throughout the lungs abg is done to find out abg is uh, arterial blood gas test in which blood will be uh, tested from the arterial 
area usually we uh, withdraw blood from the veins but for this to find out oxygen level we have to withdraw the blood from arteries that is abg arterial blood gas which shows the hypoxia and uh, we can find out whether the person is having hypoxia or the person is having uh, hyper carbon dioxide that is hypercapnia and other blood samples will be taken to find out the infection or polycythemia or uh, the alpha one antitrypsin deficiency and the one more instrument is pyrometer the previous one what we saw is spirometry uh, the image what you can see here is it's a spirometer it is a device it's a small device there is no need of any electricity or any instrument or any other uh, charges for this it is just a mechanical toy kind of appearance where the person will blow to see the capacity of the lung and he will inhale to see the capacity of the lung when the person inhales there will be increase or the balls you can see here different color balls that is green yellow and pink that will raise the more you breathe in the all the three balls will be raised the lower you inspire or breathe inside only one or the half the ball will be raised on top through this we can make out the capacity of inspiration and expiration this is called this is called spirometer the instrument is called spirometer uh, next one is pft that is pulmonary function test even this also this pulmonary function test is nothing but the spirometry is being used this is that is only called as pulmonary function test pft now next more management to how to control the copd and how we are going to treat the patient with copd i have given here first we have to ask the patient to Uh, avoid or cessate cessate means completely stop of smoking or uh, we should when we look to the chain smokers the people who are addicted to smoke we should not tell to uh, stop it at the time because they'll have withdrawal symptom so we should tell the patient or advise the patient to slow down the process of smoking so that the uh, COPD will also slow down and dust control occupational change and avoid uh, exposing to the dust and then uh, airway quality should be maintained the person with COPD should not be exposed to more of polluted areas or the cities and then uh, the person should be given bronchodilators bronchodilators are given to dilate the bronchus because the person is having chronic bronchitis and then beta 2 agonists are given that is antagonists that are salbutamol and terbutalin are used to maintain the therapy these are the medications what it does is it will improve the airway and uh, exercise the capacity of the quality of life the management are uh, anticholinergic drugs are given to reduce the respiratory death and cause airway smooth muscles and then corticosteroids are given to reduce the inflammation and to prevent exacerbation and then uh, uh, other bronchodilators as we already discussed about the bronchodilators if it already is not working high dosage of the bronchodilators will be given and then tumor necrosis the because there will be uh, lack of oxygen supply to the tissues leading to necrosis that is called tissue death to control that one an antagonist such as infliximab are given which are the suppress the immune system and reduce the inflammation these medications are given and then oxygen supplements are given if the patient is not uh, breathing properly uh, direct oxygen masks are given so that more of oxygen should be inhaled in case of failure of respiration the person cannot take breathe at all uh, ventilator machine will be connected where the forceful oxygen has been administered and expiration will be done by the machine called as uh, ventilator machine through this oxygen will be given and then uh, pulmonary rehabilitation that is exercise will be done for the lungs like breathing exercise doing yoga and then uh, other breathing uh, exercise will be taught to the patient nutrition will be managed because the patient who are having breathing difficulty does not concentrate more on his appetite that is why uh, he will be underweight or will be overweight because of the inflammation and the fluid increase in the body so that will be controlled by giving nutrition and dietary management should be done uh, and then surgical management such as bullectomy will be done bullectomy means when uh, damaged alveolar sacs will be removed so we call it as bullectomy 
and then the surgical is the splitum is the removal of the bully bully is when the alveolar sacs are fused together and lose its capacity and no more able to do the normal function we call it as bully and this removal of this bully is called as surgical removal of this bully is called as bullectomy a large air filled sacs can be squashed the surroundings those will be removed and then a lung volume reduction surgery where the parts of the lungs will be removed the damaged emphysema part will be removed in case of the whole lung or the lobes if at all total damage will be there there will be lung transplantation will be done the other measures will be annual influenza vaccination should be given to control the infection to the person respiratory infection so actually what happens with a person with severe copd usually what happens the prognosis here copd usually worsen over time and then can lead to death that is why we call it as it is a end stage disease when it comes to copd nursing management includes uh, airway should be maintained uh, vital should be updated every 1 uh, hour or every 2 hours to find out the disturbance in the whole body and the nutrition should be maintained the person's body and then hygiene should be maintained medication should be given exact on time based on or prescribed by the doctors course of medication should be completed properly should a proper ventilated area or the room should be given the person with copd should be isolated and uh, he should not be exposed to any of the uh, allergic or any of the positive agents such as smoke alcohol or uh, any asthma triggering factors and polluted area should not be exposed to the patient with copd so this finishes the topic copd if at all anybody has any doubts regarding copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or uh, you can contact me or go through the video again cross check uh, thank you notes thank you for watching this video